yeah, this is part two of the letter killeth. I got interrupted there if you watched the first letter, first video of the letter killeth by uh, my sinful flesh. I was not uh, uh, knowledgeable that I ran out of space. So this is part two of the letter killeth. Where I left off is talking about music. See, with entertainment, devil like remember the devil does not divide and conquer. He unites. He likes to miscegenate. You really think civil rights movement was godly? That's satanic. Okay. Uh, let's 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 talk about. Okay, God put it in my heart. God wants me to really get make this clear. Divide and conquer primarily is not the devil; it is of God. You can read the Bible and know God divides and conquers, not the devil. But we made that a satanic phrase. Remember, the devil likes to invert. Good is evil, evil is good, like Book Isaiah says. Woe to them that call good evil, evil good. So most of you probably think I'm satanic. Oh, divide and conquer. That's of the devil. The devil divide and conquer. No, he doesn't. He unites and conquers. God divide and conquers. Some scripture. Okay. Noah's flood. He divided. He got his people out of there. And he conquered the world. His wrath was on the world. Sodom and Gomorrah. He divided Sodom. Lot and his family was spared, except his wife. He conquered Lot, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, under hellfire. Devil unites and conquers the civil rights movement. Oh, that's godly, what you're talking about? That's give blacks rights, really? This is the people that don't know how the powerful the Jesuit order is. You guys talk about the Jesuit order like they're by nine. Like, oh, they're just one of the people that the devil uses. No, the De Jesuit order are the devil's 18. Okay, as far as for man, Servant Satan, there are no more demonic servants. I'm talking about people above than the Jesuit order. Jesuit order is it. They're the 18. Okay? Adolfo Nicholas, he's the most powerful man on the world earth. I'm talking about man. There's nobody above him. The only one above him is the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, and Satan, and the Godhead. But as far as for man, I'm talking about man now. There's no one above Adolfo Nicholas. Now, I guarantee there's a lot of saved people that know nothing about him. Because they don't know the Jesuit order. They hide in plain sight. They know of them. They know they're bad. But they don't know the true power of the Jesuit order. They use they use the letter of the law. Do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Oh, oh yeah. So I'm not going to listen to what he's saying. Um, the devil is a spirit. Okay, I'm not, I'm not supposed to fight against man. Are you obeying the spirit of that law or the letter? I'm obeying the spirit of the law. Yes, I know the devil needs, his, needs man to fulfill his... Uh, evil deeds. But what your man is he using the most? The Jesuit order. Illuminati is just bag men. They're just they just put there so you can bicker over them. Illuminati is I don't even concern with them. I, I'm specific. I focus on the Jesuit order because they're the ones behind all the atrocities throughout the ages. All of them. World War One, Two, Jesuit order. All of them. Hitler does not use the Jesuit order. They use him. He's their lackey. But from when you're hearing these saved Christians, they talk about the Jesuit order like, oh, they're just a tool. You like, like, they're just insignificant. They're the, they're the 18. They're the children of the disobedience in the Bible. I truly believe that's what God was referring to. Okay? Okay? If you're unsaved, you a, a, you're a children of disobedience. You're children of the night. But the, the, the children of disobedience is a Jesuit order. Oh, we're not supposed to wrestle against flesh and blood. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. I'm obeying the spirit of the law. God wants me to know who the devil is using primarily. And he's primarily, underline that word, primarily using the Jesuit order. So the civil rights movement. Here's an example where the devil does not divide and conquer. He unites and conquer. Civil rights movement, what do they do? Well, the devil has a, the de Jesuit order has an open but false policy and a secret but true policy. The open but false is what you want to know. It's the exoteric. The esoteric is the hidden meaning. Only those who understand the general order knows what I'm talking about and truly understands how the devil works. Civil rights movement on, on the veneer, on the outside, seems like, oh, it's a good thing. What are you talking about? Free the slaves. Lay, uh, the blacks have equal rights as the whites. You know, it's, it's a godly. Martin Luther King was a godly man. No, Martin Luther King is burning hell because he's an he's an integration. He's all for integration, miscegenation, and for nonviolence. Nonviolence across the board, which is sin. 
Live with men if be possible. If 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 possible, live with men peaceably. If possible. Martin Luther King wasn't like that. He was non-violence across the board. That's sin. Amish do not. I can go to Amish house right now and rape and pillage his family. He'll let me do it. Why? Because uh, the Bible says, "Leave, leave, live peaceably. Be at peace with all men." They obey in the letter of the law. The letter killeth. Yeah, the letter killeth. There's Amish people that you know that you can go ahead slap them. They're supposed to turn the other cheek because they don't know the Bible. They don't read the Bible as a spirit book. They read it as a literal book, letter, literally. So, yeah, the civil rights movement is a perfect example of the devil not dividing and conquer. He did not divide. He united the blacks and the whites. So he can conquer them together. Civil rights movement just made blacks another slave. Just made black have equal slavery with the whites. That's all I did. And those who know true history know what I'm talking about. These are quotes from presidents that shh, no one knows about. I quote. Black people and white people suffer when they, when they live together. You know who said that? Abraham Lincoln. Oh, I never heard of that in school. Exactly. Jesuits run the schools. Uh, here's another quote. This is from an ungodly, unsaved person. And even he knows how to use spiritual discernment. We have no Holy Ghost Spirit. The black and white, black and white people, they suffer. They cannot live together under one government. Thomas Jefferson. There are blacks, there are three black people, they are all for segregation. I am for biblically, biblical separation. What do I mean by that? I believe there should be a neighborhood full of whites, neighborhood full of blacks, yeah. Oh, he's a racist. Well, Jesus Christ was a racist. He came to say primarily the house of Israel, so that's a compliment. You think it's a negative, that's a compliment. So I be, God created the races so they not, cannot unite against them. That's why... Babel was one landmass, one race, one language, and they united against God, the Tower of Babel. So he separated. That's why you have different languages. The devil can't have that. He wants to unite the races, United Nations, to go against God. That's why you want to unite the blacks and whites to go against God. Civil rights movement was of the devil. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King was of the devil. That's why he calls himself the Reverend. He's God. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He's burning in hell right now. Why? Because I have discernment. And there's a lot of saved Christians think he's saved. Give me a moment because I got to power up my laptop here. We don't like to discern. Why? Because it's hard work. There are saved Christians that believe Martin Luther, Martin Luther King is in hell. I mean heaven right now. He's in hell. He's burning. There are believe the Nelson Mandela's of God. No, he's in hell. He's burning. This song's about him killing the white man. He was put in by the Jesuit order. Yeah, I think he was a knight of Malta because there's a picture of him with a knight, knight of Maltese cross on his papal uniform. Here's a good clue. Uh, here, here's, here's a good clue. And now I'm on a rant here. I'm just ranting. There's, there's no specific here. But I'm just making a point uh, how I use spiritual discernment. Um, remember, the devil unites and conquers. He does not divide and conquer. That's God. He's all for division. Be he separate. Don't tell me God's all for divide and conquer. He's unite. The devil is unite and conquer. Divide. God is divide and conquer. Unite and divide are not the same thing. We keep saying, you ever heard of that saying, the most important question. Here's where people are lost. You ever heard of that saying, the most important question to ask is why? I disagree. It's not why. Why is easy. It's, it's for, it's for, it's good against evil. It's, Devil bringing people to hell and God bringing people to heaven. That's the why. That's the easy question. You know the most important question to ask of who, what, who, what, where, when, and why? It's who. Who, what? Who's on the side of the devil? Who's on the side of God? You can only know who's on whose side by spiritual discernment. You have to have spiritual discernment. You have to read the Bible in the spirit of the law, not literally. Not literally all the time. There are some cases you have to read it literally. Like when Jesus Christ says, Who has not have a sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Oh, should I interpret that spiritually? Maybe he means, you know, sword of the spirit. No. That he means the letter of the law. Don't get, don't twist my words when I say you're supposed to read this spiritual, 
which you should, that just because you read the Bible spiritually most of the time, there are not some instances where you're supposed to be, read it by the letter of the law. And that particular scripture, remember, discern each scripture spiritually. Letter or law, letter or spirit, which one should I discern when I choose this scripture? That scripture, when he says, by a sword, is letter. He's not talking about spiritual sword, you know, allegorically. Or should say, does he mean, does, does he mean, uh, you know, Sword of the Spirit, Bible, get God's word in your heart. No, he means by a sword, literally. Why? Because we're in the present evil age. A man who does not provide for his own is worse than an infidel. You know, if you don't have a gun in your house and you're a husband, you're in sin. Providing for your own means financial. I'm just ranting here. I'm just spewing off. Sorry. Uh, see, um, well, hypocrites, I say you got to be specific or... Sometimes it's hard to be specific. I'm going. I'm trying to be as specific as I can, but there are places where you need to dart around from subject to subject. But anyways, with, with that, let's examine that scripture. A man who does not provide his own, provide for his own, is worse than an infidel. You're supposed to take that literally and spiritually. Provide for your own. What does that mean? Well, buying food for your family. Yes, but you're supposed to abide by that scripture spiritually. Man supposed to be a spiritual leader. He's supposed to teach the Bible to his family. I'm talking about the husband here. He's supposed to teach scripture, provide his own financially and safety wise. Man supposed to be armed, defend the home, which the Amish don't. By the way, you know the Amish don't watch TV? Oh, they must be saved because they abstain from evil. They don't watch TV, they're saved. No. See what my point? Just because I watch TV. Doesn't mean I'm defiled and wicked, but just because I don't watch TV doesn't mean doesn't mean I'm pure and I'm going to heaven. Because the Amish don't watch TV, which I, probably some of them do. Because you know they don't you know they they know he who obeys the letter of the law will die. The letter killeth. So the most important question to ask is who who's on the side of the God and who's on the side of the devil. Think about it. Okay, that takes some real spiritual discernment. Why is easy? Why not to go to hell? Why is easy? They're on the side of the devil. Oh, why is he doing that? He's on the side of the devil. He's saved, I know. Ken Hoven saved, but he's on the side of the devil. That's why he's saying no repentance, Christian rock, music's okay, and, and all that. Use a sermon. Who's on whose side here? The most important question to ask is who? Spiritual discernment. So civil rights movement, that's a perfect example where Devil does not divide and conquer. He unites. He unites with Catholicism. Catholicism primary Constantine primary and this is from other videos. Reason why he created Catholicism. Primary reason was political, not religion. Of course it's a religion, but his focus, his primary focus was political. He wanted to find a way, like this Christmas, to unite. The saved with the unsaved. That's it. Why? So you can rule over them better. How can I rule over someone if they're div divided? And I'm going to use scripture to suit my needs. We're supposed to be on one, under one accord. One mind. See, the scripture. I'm hiding behind the scripture. See you. Okay? I, can, I know the Bible so good that I can deceive the saved person real easily. I'm not bragging, but I can't. Why? Because I can use I can use scripture that are is intended to be interpreted spiritually, literally, and vice versa. And I can confuse people. But I'm not gonna do that. God is not the author of confusion, so I'm neither am I. The devil is. That's why he these scriptures that people are throwing around, they obey scripture by the letter when they shall obey spiritually. They obey some scripture spiritually when you shall obey by the letter. And there are some scripture where it's letter and spiritually like provide for the home. That's very vague. Absolutely. That's why you need the Holy Ghost to tell you. What does it mean by provide for your own? Provide for your own can be interpreted a lot of different ways. What's provide for your own? Well, caring for your family. You know, buying food. Yeah. Safety. Yeah. Financial. What? You're all right. All the above. But it doesn't say that. I know it didn't say that. Spiritual discernment. It doesn't say... Buy a gun for, to protect your family. Buy food for your family. And provide for your family. If you don't, you're worse than infidel. It doesn't say that. Spiritual discernment. Okay. So, the more 
What are your points are you driving here? You're all over the place. Well, let me make it specific for you. The most important question to ask is who, not why. Why should be easy. And the devil does not divide and conquer. He, unite, he, he, he unites and conquer. God divides and conquers. When he raptures us out, he conquers the world with his wrath. If he unites and conquer, if you believe God unites and conquer, then you must be a post tribber because he's going to let his body of Christ suffer with the lost world, unite, and let everybody suffer. No, he's going to divide them. All these people preaching post-trib heresy, they believe uh, God divides and conquers uh, the devil. See, and I'm even getting messed up. They believe, these post-tribbers, they're all for unite and conquer, because they're post-tribbers. No, we're going to be here. Don't worry, God's God's going to protect us. Remember, he won't put us more than we can endure. They're going to use scripture. He won't tempt you beyond, beyond what you can endure. Okay, Beware these saved people and unsaved people use the scripture the wrong way. That's the primary point of my video here. Do not Make sure you're using the scripture justly. Make sure when you judge me, you're judging me righteously. There are saved Christians out there watching movies and going to movie theaters. Don't tell me they're not saved. Okay, you're not God. You don't know why they're watching it. Could be for some edification or study they're doing. Entertainment is not a sin. I was watching 24 yesterday. Why? Because I experienced through the sermon. I can I can handle it. I wasn't let it absorb I wasn't absorbing it. I was observing it. What do you mean by absorb and absorb? Aren't they the same thing? No, they're not. Because I believe in dividing the word of truth, not just scripture. Everything. I divide everything. But there are people that say observe and absorb are the same thing. No, they're not. They need to prove it. There's levels of entertainment where you can observe and not absorb, but there's levels of entertainment. You can't. What are you talking about? Music. How many people know this? This is a scientific fact. Out of TV and music, which one utilizes 100% of your brain power? And this is the only instance where you uh, utilize 100% of your brain. That movie, Lucy, again, I'm watching the movie. Morgan Freemason, that heretic, I can't wait to burn to hell with, who says God is just an imaginary friend for, for, the, for, for a grown man. Yeah, he said that. He can burn in hell because God doesn't love him. He's in that movie. He's, he's spewing unscientific fact where... The, the human brain, we, we don't use all parts of it, which is false. We use every part of our brain, but not at the same time, except for this activity. It's TV. No, it isn't. You can watch TV and all parts of your brain are not lighting up. Why? Because there are studies for that. Research it. Oh, so you're saying I can go ahead and watch TV and I won't be defiled, I won't be mind controlled? I'm not saying that. I have spiritual discernment. I don't absorb it. I observe it. There are people that don't have the sermon that they'll watch TV. They will be defiled off of this video here. Yeah, he's telling me I can go watch TV. I didn't say that. Okay, there are some shows, nature shows. Go ahead. I watch, uh, I have an HTTV with HD. It's beautiful now. Watch nature shows. You're supposed to admire God's, my, and, and praise God for his creation. I watch nature shows. I watch planet Earth. I watch these heretical Documentary. You know, out of everything that defiled me and really mind controlled me, it wasn't TV. It was this documentary called Zeitgeist. Again, that's a documentary. Why well, I can't watch a documentary? Now you're telling me I can't watch that? Out of everything that defiled me, that really messed me up, that really destroyed my faith, it was not TV. It was not even music. It was Zeitgeist, that documentary. And all that you watched, I know what I'm talking about. That destroyed my faith in Jesus Christ. It wasn't TV. It wasn't music. It was a documentary. Something that was intended. That had some truth, by the way. A lot of truth. But that destroyed me spiritually. He took uh he took uh Christianity and told it was pagan. He's half right, by the way. Pagan Christianity. He's talking about Christianity across the board. Catholicism, don't forget, it's pagan Christianity. It's pagan, I know, but it's also Christianity. Unite, pagan Christianity, unite and conquer. So, Zeitgeist, the, the way it got me is, he, he said, look, all these religions are just like Christianity. Why? Because they're all the same. 
No. They're all the same because they copied off Christianity and they point at themselves saying, point the finger at themselves saying, look, they're all the same. And then by in turn, you throw the baby with the bathwater out. That's how the devil likes to get you. That's how the devil gets us with Calvinism. Are there some heretical doctrine in Calvinism? Absolutely. That's why I uh, say Christian when I even bother him talking about it. Throw the baby out of the bathwater. But there are some aspects of Calvinism that are biblical, like total depravity, the prayed rule of man, and unconditional election. That's biblical. But a Christian won't use the sermon. No. I'm using, I ain't, I ain't using the sermon. No, you're not. And they throw that away. Baby with the bathwater. So, all those people are against Christians watching TV. I'm say, I just say TV now. I'm not saying music. Music is a whole different story. I'll get to that. All the people saying on TV, you know, let, let it between. Don't judge. Judge righteously. Don't let him. What if for a man let me judge an issue of liberty by another man's conscience? That's in the Bible. Let that between me and God. So out of everything that defiled me, it wasn't TV, it was that zeitgeist, that damnable doctrine, Peter Joseph, atheist, which I hope he's burning in hell. Do I sound like a guy that loves sinners? I'm supposed to love sinners in a way of telling them the truth. I love Peter Joseph. I told him the truth, he's burning in hell, or he's going to burn in hell if he's not dead. You expect me to love him? Oh, don't be compassionate. No. God doesn't love him like that. Why should I love him like that? You love people by telling the truth. So, Peter Joseph, this atheist that created this side guy's documentary, destroyed a lot of people's faith. Why? Because he destroyed my faith back in the day when, when I had no spiritual discernment. He got me with that. Oh, he's right. All these religions are just like, like Christianity. Christianity is pagan. He's half right. Catholicism is pagan Christianity. It's the ways of the heathen mixed with Christianity, or the garb, the veil, using Christian characters in the Bible mixed with pagan Christianity, which was Christmas is all about. Don't throw me that. Don't judge me about Holy Day. Don't throw that scripture. You're using that scripture wrong. See, the Bible, a sword, use a sword as, don't use a sword like a wrench. It's a sword of the Spirit. Don't use a sword to, to cut your sandwiches with. I'm talking about the Bible. I'm just making a metaphor here. It's, the Bible is supposed to be a sword. Use a sword in the right way. That's all I'm saying. Don't use a sword. I wouldn't use a sword. I'm talking about a real sword now. I wouldn't use a sword to cut cut my uh, making food. I wouldn't use a five, five foot long broad sword to cut my cucumbers with. I wouldn't use that to uh, chop, chop uh, I don't know. You, you would use the chop wood. But that's not expedient. Use an axe. You would not use a broad to chop wood. All I'm saying, when you use the Bible against me, use it in the right way. That's all I'm saying. Make sure you're using it by the spirit of the law. And in some cases, if the letter of the law is required, make sure you use it the right way. And I'll use some spiritual discernment. I won't back down right away. Because you're supposed to be stubborn. And I'll pray about it and see if it's correct. So let's go back to that thing about absorbing and not observing. It's not the same thing. Remember I told you, you do use all parts of the brain. Just you don't use all parts of your brain at the same time, except for one activity. Can you guess what it is? It's not TV. The one activity that you do that you're using 100% of your brain power, that means you're tuned in, you're absorbed, is not TV. Although TV is very powerful. It's not TV. Okay? It's music. Okay? That's a fact. Scientific fact. Look it up. Music is the only thing that you do that you're using 100% of your brain power. That's why I stay away with it, and I only listen to classical music from now on. Okay? The Pied Piper, you know, that guy playing the flute, and everybody follow him? That's the devil. The devil's the Pied Piper. Okay? All these Christians saying, don't watch TV, I'll probably listen to some music. Okay? And you're telling me, watch out, don't defy your main mind, abstain from the appearance. There's someone using the Bible in the wrong way right there. Oh, the Bible says appearance of all evil. That's TV. Music, no. Set no wicked thing beyond my eyes, my eyes, okay? So I can go ahead and listen to music. See how I can use the Bible to, to benefit me? All these Christians saying, don't watch TV or listening to some music that shouldn't, they should not be listening to. Oh, no, but the Bible says... uh. Eyes, you know, appearance. You can't appear. You're not watching music. I know, but uh, do you know your, you know your body responds more to 
words sound than your ears. You know you're more of an auditory creature than visual. That's a scientific fact. I can't make this stuff up. Words do hurt. Okay? Okay? The power... Here, let me use Bible in the right way right now. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot. They may have killed someone physically with a gun, but primarily they killed people with their tongue. Preaching about it. Words kill. What is music? Words. So, I'll show you some grace with TV. Music? Mm. Unless you listen to something. What about fifth edification? Mm. I told you, I have spot, strong spiritual discernment. Real strong. I'm not bragging. I do. But I don't listen to worldly music. Unless it's classical. And my favorite classical song, by the way, is the one that's exhorting Christ. This is a classical music. I don't know who it's by, but it's about talking about King of King and Lord of Lords. King of Kings. Hallelujah. Ha. It, for those who watch Face Off, again, the movie, Face Off, Nicolas Cage, Night of Malta, Nicolas Cage, he's singing that song in my classical music. Ha, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. Music was primarily to praise God. That's one of my favorite classical musics. I'll probably play that today. Why? Is exhorting God? Is it praising God? Not exhorting. Exhorting you, exhort brethren. Praise is above. You don't praise brethren. Again, Praise and exhort, they're not the same words. Divide the words, they don't mean the same thing. I exhort brethren, I praise God. He must increase and I decrease. Yeah, that's one of my favorite classical songs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, yeah, music. So all these Christians saying, abstain from appearance of all evil. TV, music, uh, uh, movies, all of it. No, TV, movies, I'll give you some grace there. Why? Because I say observe it. Don't absorb it. Okay? You could be watching a movie and remind you of a sin you're doing. You don't even know about it. I could be watching a movie about, I used to cuss like a sailor. Good fellow. They're cussing all the way. Man, look at them cussing. I used to be like that. Oh, Lord of the Brute. What a wretched thing, man, I am. That could remind me of watching that movie. Don't tell me I can't be edified by some movies. That's all I'm saying. And by some TV shows. I said some, not all. Some. Music? No. Music, scientific fact that you're auditory, you respond more of auditory than what you see. The heart, does the heart have eyes? Remember, your eyes are connected to your brain. What you see goes into your brain. Well, there you go, it's mind control. No. Do you know out of the brain and the heart, which one influences you the most? Well, the heart, of course. Anyone that knows the anatomy of the body, the beginning of the Lord is the beginning of fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Knows the heart influences you more than your own heart or your brain. Maybe that's why the Bible talks about the heart more than the mind. Yeah. And man, as a man thinketh in his heart, thinketh, but in his heart, so is he. The heart is deceitfully, desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know your heart influences you more than your mind does? Do you know that? has a stronger electromagnetic field. It can think. I'm not making this up. When you're in danger, it senses it before even your brain, your eyes sees it. Oh, that, that, that reminds me of precognition in Spider-Man. It does. Which is in a movie, by the way. That reminds me. Are you saying I have superpowers? I can sense things before it happen. Well, if you're, you have Holy Spirit power, yeah. So this is what these movies talk about, X-Men, with all well, these people having powers. No, they're demon-possessed. They're demon-possessed. Remember, you can't have power. You can't have demonic power. Remember, power. There's two kinds of it. Remember, the devil likes to do whatever God he does. Oh, you want power? I'll give you power, too. I'll give you demonic power. ESP, lifting with your mind. I believe those are true, but those people are demon-possessed. All these guys having strength, un unimaginable strength, that's demon-possession. But you can have Holy Spirit power. You can just sense things. No, I'm not going to do that. And I know I'm not going to go out with them and you find out they got killed. Well, that sounds like you have precognition. Yes and no. Holy Ghost told me not to go there. So, yeah, your heart influences you more than your mind. Okay? That's a scientific fact. Remember, obey all truth. The Holy Ghost guides you to all truth. Secular and non-secular. 
And the Bible talks about more than the heart than the mind. I don't even have to do a search. If it doesn't, heart has to be right up there. I'm talking about what the Bible talks about more, heart and mind. Heart has to be up there. I think it's more than the mind. So when you're listening to music, which you think the music affects your mind, it goes down in your heart if you believe, if you let it absorb. There's no letting. You can listen to rap, rock and roll music, and have strong spiritual discernment. I'm going to do what he says. I'm not going to let it absorb me. I'm going to absorb it. No, you can't absorb uh, observe music. Impossible. It's going to sink in. Well, maybe if you're playing it on the speaker. Because there are differences between listening to secular music on the speaker and in the headphones. Don't tell me there's no difference. Because binaural beats, which is of the devil. You heard of binaural beats? That's all about demon possession. What do they say when you listen to binaural beats? Uh, make sure you listen in, use it in the headphones. Why? Because it, so it can go down to your heart. Music is way more powerful than TV. And don't tell me it isn't. Because that's the only activity, 100% your brain uses it. 100% you use all parts of your brain when you listen to music. That's a fact. So for me saying that, I listen to classical music on my speaker. Maybe I should listen to it by the headphones. And really let, so I can really absorb it. Oh, so you're saying I can listen to rap music on the speaker. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying if you listen to the rap music, you're probably better off. But I prefer you don't listen to rap music at all. But if you, you still have this urge to listen to it, again, I'm not going to judge you of your liberty. Listen to it on the speaker. Beware when you listen on the headphones. Now you cannot fight it. You listen to rap music and rock music. By the headphones. You know when some I said I watched the movie when he was torturing a guy. 24. A TV show. He was torturing a guy. You know how he was torturing him? He wasn't torturing him, you know, through pharmaceutical, waterboarding. He was torturing him with sound. This is how he was torturing him. He put him in a room. He covered his eyes. And this is scientific fact. This is a method of torture. He plays something like binaural beats. Headphones, not speaker. He put the headphones on him. He covered his whole head. And it's just noises. The guy came in. He said, are you done? You ready to talk? Don't do not do that again. It's been five hours. The guy's like, it has not been five hours. It's been five minutes. You think it's been five hours. The power of sound. I don't know what the method of torture that's called. But yeah, don't tell me that... Oh. Uh, Music and TV are the same. No, it isn't. Music's a whole lot worse, and the devil knows it. All these rappers, these R&B singers, they're witches and sorcerers. Nothing more. They're pulling a spell on you. So, if you have to listen to rap, listen to a speaker. But I prefer you don't listen to rap at all. I prefer the only, if you have to listen to secular music, listen to some classical, some Beethoven. Johan Shabastin Bach, you don't think the devil's in classical music? You can't use spiritual discernment. I don't listen to Mozart all that much because I think he was a 33rd degree Freemason. Okay? I think he died at the age of 33, by the way. Some people say 35. No, I think he died at the age of 33. So I don't listen to his music. By the way, his, his song called Requiem from Mozart, it sounds like the demons. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys heard that. I'm sure you, if you watch some commercials, classical music is all commercial. Devil's in everything. If it's worldly. Okay? He's in everything. Oh, you just said classical music is okay. Use some discernment. I think Mozart, stay away from him. I listen to Bach, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff. Yes. You know, the ones that, the ones that are praising God. Absolutely. I listen to it by the speaker. I need to listen to it by the headphones so I can really absorb it. So, I end with this. For Christian Watson TV, it's a liberal issue. It's an issue liberty. Don't tell him he's in sin. You're in sin by telling him he's in sin. Okay? You don't know what he's watching. You could be watching a nature show, a debate of creationism. But there's not that in TV. Well, Bill Nye was debating this guy called Ham on C-SPAN TV. I watched it. Go watch it on the internet. It was on TV primarily, though. came on TV first, then they put it on the internet. I couldn't believe my eyes. They let this on TV? 
TV is not 100% defiled, as in all the churches out there, even though I don't go to church building. Don't tell me all of them are of the devil. No, they're not. Charles Lawson of Tennessee has a church building. And he's preaching the word of God. Praise God. Okay? Don't throw the baby wet out the, with the bathwater. Oh, it's 100% all bad. No. Music, I believe 98, 99% is all back. bad. Why? Because I just told you why. It's impossible to resist the power of music. You can't observe music. You can absorb it. There's nothing to observe. Do you see music? Oh, you can see the notes and everything. When I'm listening to Beethoven right now, if I turn on some music right now, am I seeing it? No. I'm, I'm listening to it. I'm absorbing it. TV, though, you observe. But through observing, you can have some discernment. Now, I'm not going to let that mortify, you hold every thought captive. I'm going to eat the meat, speed up the bones. I'm not going to let that defile me. Oh, there, he's saying watch anything on TV. No, I didn't say that. Okay, some things you can watch, some things you can't. What? Let the Holy Ghost discern you and guide you to all truth. Here's three movies I absolutely, i end with this. Here's the movies that I believe every Christian that has strong spiritual discernment should watch. Why? Because you're living in a digital simulation. All this is not real. I'm not real. That's why. Why? Movies taught me. Matrix number one. Uh, Inception. I'm in my head right now, remember? I told you about that. Watch my ministry. I'm not getting into that, but I'm in my head. Well, the Bible says you're in God's building. Yeah, I'm in church right now. I'm in my head. Much like those people in Inception. They were in each other's heads. Yeah. Matrix, Inception, 13th floor. 13th floor. It's about digital simulation. They Live, Roddy Roddy Piper. Absolutely good movie. Has a black preacher there preaching the word of God. The fear of God is not before their eyes. That's in the movie. They're corrupt, the rich, and the powerful. Those are the people that saw they live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Watch that movie. Uh, Book of Eli, somewhat. Has some good meat there. Remember, eat the meat, spit out the bones. You can do that with TV, with visual stuff. It's very hard to eat the meat, spit out the bones with music. Oh, I'm going to ask spiritual discernment. I'm going to listen to this Lil Wayne here. I'm going to eat the meat, spit out the bones. Oh, really? Really? I just told you. You hear what I just said? It's going one year out the other. Are you absorbing what I'm just saying? My words? That's why I'm not making these videos. Some of these Christians like making these videos, you know, animation. It's all really good. No, no. I'm going to do a plain leech. Just speak. Because I know my words have power. I'm not going to make these anima animations and all these Christians. That's all well and good, but... I want, to, I want you to pay attention to what I'm speaking because I know my words are powerful. Oh, I'm just going to listen to Lil Wayne. Right? I'm going to use some spiritual discernment because the Bible says appearance. You know, Bible's mostly against TV, not a music. Okay, I'm dividing the word of truth. No. The Bible's more against music than in TV. Why? Because God knows that you're an auditory creature more than, more than you are visual. Yeah, you are a visual creature. Auditory more than visual. You respond more to auditory. That's why people killed Jews when Hitler told them to. Mouth. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Not the eyes. Not the ears. The power of life and death is in the tongue. But how do you... How does that give you power of life and death? Depends if you hear them or not. Yeah. Remember, you can listen to what I'm saying, but are you hearing what I'm saying? Hearing and listening are two different things. You can hear what I'm saying, but not listen to me. What? Now you're talking crazy. They're the same thing. No, they're not. Some people are hearing what I'm talking about right now, and it's just blah, 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 blah. They get, that's all they're hearing. But there's a Christian out there. They're listening to what I'm saying. They're listening. Don't hear what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. They're not the same thing. When you listen to Lil Wayne, you're not listening. You're not hearing him. The beats when he's saying. Oh, I'm just listening to the beats. You ever heard people say that? No. You are absorbing what is, what is that? Sorcerer, Lil Wayne. He's a sorcerer. You are hearing and listening what he's saying. The beats, the rhythm. Doom, 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 doom. All that, he's pulling a spell on you. He's making your body move, literally. No. You cannot observe it. You will absorb it. 
Now, depending on how you have strong spiritual discernment, you might not absorb it all, but you are absorbing it. So I end with this. Don't say I'm in sin, please, because I'm watching TV, or occasionally I go from theater from time to time. You're in sin by telling you I'm in sin. That's an issue of liberty, not a doctrine. So don't break off with brethren that watches TV sparingly and movies sparingly, if it doesn't defile them. But if your brethren is watching TV eight hours a day, watching movie, go to movie theater every day, come on, use the spirit of discernment. I'm saying from time to time. Now, I would rather I will distance myself from a brethren more if he's listening to music eight hours a day than he's watching TV eight hours a day. Because I know what music does to you. Don't tell me it's the same thing with TV. As out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The abundance of the heart depends on what you're listening to. That's why primarily, here's my day. What do you watch every day? Primarily is other Christians. I watch YouTube ministry. Then, since the Bible told me, study makes weariness of the flesh. God knows all about how the flesh, oh, reading the Bible really takes a toll on you. This is, this is, this is, this is the 15th video I'm watching about this ministry on YouTube. God knows that. God's tapping him on the shoulder. Watch this football game. Relax. Watch some 24. Relax. Don't tell me I'm in sin. Okay? God does not expect to read the Bible 24-7, listening to ministries 24-7, or even eight hours a day. Study makes weariness of the flesh. But you, do, but you will prefer preference. Remember, liberty. I'm under liberty, not grace. That you watch some TV and not some music, because he knows what music does to you. Okay? Okay? Uh, so what you're saying? I'm saying hearing and listening are not the same. Use some discernment. Divide and conquer is of God. Unite and conquer is of the devil. I'm not making no more examples. Figure it out. Use some discernment. Hearing and listening is not the same. Liberty and grace is not the same. Television and music are not the same. That's what this video is about. The devil likes to merge words, merge ideologies, and merge, just merge, merge, merge. Miscegenate, miscegenate, miscegenate. Race mix, race mix, race mix. He loves to unite, unite, unite. God likes to divide. Divide the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I take that to the extreme, not just the word of truth of God, everything. Oh, what does he mean by that? Does it mean this or that? Let me ask him. I'm watching this on TV. What does it mean by this? Let me read the scripture. What does it mean by this? Question, question, question. Oh, so you're supposed to be stubborn or don't question everything. You send the sermon. What are you questioning? Okay. The most important question to ask in life is the who? And the what? Well, who's he on the side of? He's on the side of God or the devil? What is his purpose? Not why. I already know why. Why is a stupid question. He's of the devil. The f ye father of the devil and the lust of the father you will do. Most important question is you who? Then what? And only the people that know who the Jesuit order really is. Let me, let me end with the Jesuit order. I know I'm ranting. Jesuit order are the children of the disobedience. The Roman Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon. It's it's funny, these people that, that are for Christmas, they're lost in who the final Christ, the final Antichrist is. They don't know who he is. Some people say the Pope of Rome is the false prophet. No, he isn't. The, the Antichrist is a, a Syrian. He's from the Middle East. He's Islamic. No, he isn't. Since I have spiritual discernment, and I know the Jesuit order is the supreme, uh, is the A-team of the devil, is who, is who the devil uses above everyone else of Illuminati. They're just bag men. Rothschild, no, no, no. Jesuit order is who the devil uses primarily above everybody. Since I know better, the, I know who the final pope is. It's the Antichrist is the final pope of Rome. How do I know that? What? Well, easy, because I know Christmas is the Antichrist holiday. It's to prepare for his arrival, just like Easter is. If I didn't know that, of course I'd be lost like all these other Christians. I wouldn't know who the the final the final Antichrist is. It's the Pope of Rome, and I believe his name will be 
Petros Romanus. He's going to take the name of Peter the Roman. Oh, that means he can't be Bergoglio. Right. I don't think this is Pope right here, Bergoglio. I don't think he's the final Pope. Could be, but I'm using some discernment. I think the final Pope of Rome would be called Peter. Why? Do you have some scripture? Actually, I do. Uh, Peter, how is he crucified? Upside down. Upside down cross. Oh, that's the sign of the Antichrist. Yes, it is. Didn't Jesus call Peter Satan once? Yes, he did. Again, I can't say no. Remember, I'm using my words wisely. I choose my words wisely. Not all the time, but I make an effort. Belief and no are not the same thing. Just because you believe in something does not mean you know it to be true. Does God want you to believe you have everlasting life or no? First John five, uh, First John five thirteen. Make sure that ye know ye have everlasting life. So, do you know the final Antichrist is the Pope? Yes. Do you know that his name will be Peter the Roman? No. I'm using spiritual discernment. I believe his name will be Peter. Because don't the Catholics think Peter was the first pope? Which he wasn't. You don't know nothing about Catholics. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't know nothing about Catholics. That's why I went to St. Peter's School in Boston. Irish Roman Catholic Boston. I was a Catholic for eight years. I went to St. Peter's School for four years. And I went to Don Bosco Preparatory School for four years. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're right. I know all about curricular confession. Because I did it. Communion. I'm talking about Roman Catholic communion, not communion with God, because I did it. Took the Eucharist. Went to Roman Catholic Mass. I can fit right in. Some people told me, why don't you, you don't be a priest when I was in Catholic school? I could have been a priest. I could have been a Catholic priest. Why? Because I know all the doctrine, in and out. I have the head knowledge. But I did not absorb it. See what I'm talking about? I observed Catholicism, but I did not let it go into my heart. I did not absorb it. If I let Catholicism absorb me, then you I will be speaking a lot differently in this video. But anyone who who has a spiritual discernment can tell, yeah, this guy, yeah, he's speaking some things I don't agree with, but I think he's saved. I strong I don't I'm not gonna say no because I don't know his heart, but I strongly believe he's saved. Yeah. He's using some strong discernment. He has I can say I can tell he in the terms of Catholicism, he knows he's talking about. Of course, you live in a Catholic world. I'm sorry I keep saying I end with this, I end with this, but remember, I'll end. I'm, I'm doing my Father's will, not my will. The Holy Ghost will tell me when this video is over, not me. You live in a Catholic world, okay? If you're unsaved, you're a Catholic. I said this before. Or oh, I'm atheist, you're a Catholic. Or oh, I'm a Jehovah Witness, you're a Catholic. Or oh, I'm Hindu, you're a Catholic. Or oh, I'm a Buddha. I'm a Catholic. Do you know the yin yang sign is not a Chinese symbol, it's a Roman Catholic symbol? You know what the yin yang sign really means? We're all good and all evil. But what the scriptures say? There is none righteous, not one. We all sin. The Bible's saying you're all evil, not half good, half evil. Black and white. Oh, what do you know? That's the colors of the Jedi Knights and the Sith Lords in Star Wars. The Force Awakens. Jehovah Witness thinks Holy Ghost is a force, by the way. White and black, what do you know? Of course, Jesuits run Hollywood. Oh, I know about the Jesuit order. Not like you don't know about the Jesuit order like I know about the Jesuit order. Okay? You don't you think they're a benign group? Or oh, sure, you might think they're powerful, but they're not you don't think they're powerful like I do. Jesuit order is supreme over every other order in the world. The only one that's above the Jesuit order is God Almighty and the devil. In terms of men on earth, there's no one above the Jesuit order. Okay, good, good expert on the Jesuit order is Eric John Phelps of Vatican Assassins. Read his book. Highly recommend it. He's saved, by the way, because I know there's people out there saying I'm not reading that book. I don't think he's saved. He's saved. Then read it. How's that? There are people out there that won't read a book if it's if it's not by uh, saves first of all. Here's another saved person, Henry Morris, Long War Against God. He preached, he talks about humanism, which is what Catholicism is. Humanism. You live in a humanistic world. That's why we call human beings. You means God, man. You're a human being, really? You're a God man? I thought the God man was Jesus Christ. He's a human being. Don't call yourself a human being. Humanism is God, 
is man becoming God? Well, of course. All these religions are humanism. Catholicism preaches that you attain Godhood if you're in the Catechism. Hindu, you can attain Godhood. Mormonism, atheism, you're already there. You're already a God. I decide what's right and wrong because there is no God. Everything's your God. So if you're unsaved, you, you think you're God, period. And if you think you're God, you're Catholic. Because Catholic gave birth to all these religions. So I end with that. I am for peace when I speak. It's meant for war. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Peace.